friends this video on thermodynamics part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com no more fear from exam please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 9 from part 1 to part 8 before going ahead with part 9 now we will talk about specific heat capacity you must be thinking why are we discussing about specific heat capacity all of a sudden because we have already dealt with this topic in the lesson thermal properties of matter the reason why we are having a revision of this is because as we go ahead we will talk about certain special thermodynamic processes and while discussing those processes we will need we will need and we will use this specific heat capacities very frequently so we will have a brush up of specific heat capacity specific heat capacity is nothing but the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of a body per unit mass that means it is the amount of heat energy to raise the temperature of an object per unit mass that is one unit mass what is unit mass one unit mass would mean 1 g 1 kg that is unit mass right so in order to raise the temperature of unit mass whatever is the amount of heat energy required that is known as specific heat capacity specific heat capacity depends on nature of the substance so that means it it is not a uniform value all the time depending on the substance the value of specific heat capacity changes similarly it also depends upon temperature that means by how much temperature i mean or by how much value you want to increase the temperature so it also depends on that it is denoted by a small s and how do we express specific heat capacity mathematically specific heat capacity is expressed as 1 by m delta q by delta t where m is nothing but mass of the body as per definition it is the amount of heat energy required amount of heat energy is nothing but delta q to raise the temperature per unit mass to raise the temperature by delta t per unit mass that is m so s that is specific heat capacity is equal to 1 by m delta q by delta t so with the help of this expression you can see that the unit will be nothing but joule per kilogram per kelvin that's because unit of mass is kilogram so it will be kilogram inverse what is delta q it is joule and what is temperature it is kelvin so it will be joule per kg per kelvin now let us see what was molar specific heat capacity molar specific heat capacity is same as specific heat capacity with the only difference being in specific heat capacity we talk about per unit mass in molar specific heat capacity we talk about per unit mole that is why the term molar has been added with specific heat capacity so we say that it is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of a body per unit mole so this is the only difference you know what is one mole right one mole is nothing but the number of molecules present divided by the molecular mass so it is denoted by capital c and the expression for molar specific heat capacity c would be the same as that of specific heat capacity just that we will replace mass m with mole mu mu is the number of moles so 1 by mu delta q by delta t many times people also represent number of moles by small n so it is up to you whichever you feel convenient you can use that it depends on nature of the substance temperature and conditions under which the heat is supplied so joule so the unit for this would be joule per mole per kelvin so the even the unit is the same just that instead of mass you have the unit for number of moles now let us see what is cp and cv c is molar specific heat capacity so what does that subscript p and v means when i say cp i mean molar specific heat capacity at constant pressure 
So this subscript P denotes constant pressure. That means the value of specific heat capacity at constant pressure. Similarly, Cv is nothing but specific heat capacity at constant volume. For an ideal gas, the relation between Cp and Cv is as follows. For an ideal gas, it says that Cp minus Cv is equal to R, where R is the universal gas constant. I have talked about all these things in very much detail in the previous chapters where I have talked about specific heat capacities, where I have talked about these equations and I have derived them as well. So if you want to have a thorough understanding of all of these again, you just go through those lessons in which I have explained all these things. You can refer thermal properties of matter, you can also refer kinetic theory of gases. So you will see the videos for these topics in detail. So here I'll prove Cp minus Cv is equal to R for you using the first law of thermodynamics. So the, from first law of thermodynamics, from first law, we know that delta Q is equal to delta U plus delta W. Now here we are considering it for an ideal gas. So we consider it as the scenario that the gas is enclosed in a cylinder which is fitted with a movable piston. You remember the scenario, right? So if you consider that scenario for this gas as well, you can write delta W that is work done as P delta V, right? Now at constant volume, let us suppose that initially you keep the entire system at a constant volume. That means you don't change the volume of the system. So if the system is at constant volume, then delta V will be equal to 0. So in that case, what will happen to this expression? This expression will become delta Q is equal to delta U. Right? Now from this, we can write at constant volume, what is the specific heat capacity? Cv. And how do we define Cv? Cv is nothing but delta Q by delta T at constant volume, right? Because Cv is the specific heat capacity at constant volume. So specific heat capacity is given by delta Q by delta T because it talks about per unit mass or per unit mole. So that I have considered as unity for now. Per unit, unit is nothing but one. So we can write Cv is equal to delta Q by delta T at constant volume. What is delta Q? It is nothing but delta U. So we can write delta U by delta T at constant volume. So this we can write as delta U by delta T. Now let us write an expression for Cp. So in order to do that, let us consider that if that system of gas enclosed in a cylinder is at constant pressure. So in that case, what will happen? We can write Cp is equal to delta Q by delta T at constant pressure. So what will be delta Q in that situation? Delta Q would be this expression. So we can write delta Q as delta U plus P delta V. Right? So this divided by delta T at constant pressure. So this we can write it as delta U by delta T at constant pressure plus P delta V by delta T at constant pressure. Now we know that the change, what is delta U? Delta U is nothing but the change in internal energy. So the change in internal energy depends only on temperature, right? Because when the temperature changes, the motion of the molecules changes. Therefore, the total internal energy also changes. So it is, it depends only on temperature and it does not depend on pressure, right? So we can write this as Cp is equal to delta U by delta T plus P delta V by delta T at constant pressure. So this is the expression for Cp and we have already got an expression for Cv here, right? 
Now using these two expressions we can write Cp minus Cv will be equal to what is Cp? Cp is delta u by delta t plus P delta V by delta T at constant pressure minus delta U by delta T. So delta U by delta T and delta U by delta T will cancel. So Cp minus Cv comes out to be P delta V by delta T at constant pressure. Now what is this P delta V by delta T? We are continuously talking about ideal gases, right? We have always assumed that the gas is ideal. Now, for ideal gases, what is the equation of state? For ideal gases, I have already defined the equation of state as PV is equal to RT. How, why RT? Mu is equal to 1 because that mu was nothing but the number of moles and we have assumed here that number of moles is equal to 1. We are now talking about 1 mole of a gas. That is why here also I have vanished the mu because Cv is also equal to 1 by mu delta Q by delta T. But I have vanished mu because I, have, I am assuming that we are considering everything for 1 mole of gas. So from this I can say P delta V is equal to R delta T. We can write it in this way. Again from this, I can say that P delta V by delta T is equal to R. So using this in the above expression, we can say that this particular expression can be written as R. Therefore, we proved that Cp minus Cv is equal to R. But this is true only for ideal gases. Please do not forget that right now we are talking only about ideal gases. We are not considering any real gas in the picture. We are only talking about ideal gases. So that is how Cp minus Cv is proved from first law of thermodynamics. Now we will uh, talk about specific heat ratio. Basically we will not talk about it in detail. If you really want to go through its detail, I will tell you the videos which you should refer. Specific heat ratio is denoted by gamma and it is nothing but the ratio of Cp and Cv. Cp by Cv is defined as gamma which is the specific heat ratio. And this gamma has specific values for different polyatomic gases. For monoatomic gas, the value of Cv is 3 by 2R and the value of Cp is 5 by 2R. Similarly, for diatomic gases, value of Cv is 5 by 2R and value of Cp is 7 by 2R. So using these values, we have specific values of gamma for both monoatomic and diatomic. For example, for this gamma is equal to Cp by Cv. So Cp by Cv comes out to be 5 by 3. That comes out to be 1.67. Similarly, in this case, gamma comes out to be Cp by Cv, which again comes out to be 7 by 5. That comes out to be 1.4. So these are the specific values of gamma for monoatomic and diatomic gases. Now, if you want to know the detail of this, I mean, if you want to know from where, suddenly from where does this 3 by 2 hour, 5 by 2 hour and 7 by 2 hour come into picture. For this, you can refer to the videos of kinetic theory and for specific videos, the video numbers are 24, 25, 26. Please refer to kinetic theory videos part 24, part 25 and part 26 to see how do we arrive to these values. How do we derive the value of specific heat ratio for monoatomic gases, diatomic gases and polyatomic gases. Basically these ratios are uh, derived using the equipartition theory. So I will not waste further time on deriving these values and we will go ahead with the next slide. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com 
to watch free educational videos 